Good evening and welcome to tonight's edition of News 22. I'm Brian Frankovich. And I'm Aaron Fitzsimons. The college database, a nonprofit organization that provides information on educational pursuits for both students and families, has recognized, that Eastern, has recognized Eastern as one of the top colleges for military service. Eastern ranks first in the state of Connecticut to supply students with both an Army and Air Force ROTC program. The annual tuition rate for a student who joins any ROTC program is $4,124. Vice President of the College Database, was Ri Wes Ricketts, says, College with ROTC programs gives students a great opportunity not only to explore military service, but to gain valuable leadership skills conferred by employers. To learn more, visit easternct.edu slash veterans. With Black Friday right around the corner, customers and employees are preparing for the day shenanigans. Kmart recently announced that they will be opening their stores at 6 a.m. on Thanksgiving Day. They believe that most people would be excited and relieved, but Kmart received a different response. Customers were angry at a new plan. Some even threatened to boycott the store for being insensitive to its workers. There is no say whether or not Kmart will change their plans. Harley-Davidson has decided to start selling a pair of new smaller motorcycles in the spring of 2014. The new bikes are designed for younger riders. With the new design, the bikes will have lighter frames and a narrower profile. The highly anticipated new bikes are predicted to be huge successes with urban riders. Last Friday, a family of three had been reporting missing after police found their car burning and upside down in a ditch in the central part of Mississippi. On Monday, authorities found the bodies of Jaden Hill, age 7, Atira Hill, age 30, and Lattery Smith, age 34. The bodies were found in an old house near the car's location. All three had been shot. On Tuesday, Lydell Burns was arrested in Jackson on Tuesday. Police have yet to provide a connection between Burns and the deceased family. State officials are investigating testing suspicions at the Ramon E. Batances Early Reading Lab School in Hartford. The investigation released its first report on November 6th. Was launched, it was launched in August after the State Department of Education noticed possible testing irregularities in the third grade reading comprehension section of the 2013 Connecticut Mastery Test. No one yet has been charged with the altering of the tests, but the investigation found that there were an abnormal number of erasures on the tests at the Batances School. Hartford Public Schools Superintendent Christina M. Kishimoto expressed that, quote, a finding of wrongdoing without in identifying any individual has a negative effect on students, families, and staff. We are all left with unanswered questions. Authorities said a woman has died after falling 11 stories from her balcony at a Sanford condominium building. Officers and paramedics were called to the building in Stafford on Tuesday evening after a 42-year-old woman, whose name has yet not yet been released, fell from her balcony. Police are investigating whether the fall was an accident, a suicide attempt, or something else. Building security guard Jelani Allen told the advocate of Sanford that he heard that the woman scream and that the fall sounded like an accident. He said the woman was conscious and responding to people talking to her after she fell. Officials said that she was brought to the Sanford Hospital where later she then passed away. Monday night, a 20-year-old gunman opened fire at a New Jersey mall and later took his own life in a back room. Richard Shoup's body was found at 3.20 a.m. Tuesday in an odd part of Westfield Garden State Plaza Mall hours after he fired at least six bullets. Thankfully, none of the shots were fired at another person. Quote, he had more than enough opportunity to be able to shoot other people, including a group standing right next to him, but he didn't, Bergen County Prosecutor John Molinelli said. Instead, he shot randomly at different locations. Shots were fired at the ceiling, an escalator, an elevator, and a storefront, the prosecutor said. Authorities say that he acted alone, and Molinelli said that his intent was either suicide or to do something which would cause police to shoot him. Shoup's brother, Kevin, said Tuesday, quote, my brother intended to harm nobody else but himself. He just sadly decided to make an act of self-indulgence by taking his own life publicly. And it's a tragedy to us all. Little did 22-year-old Alicia Ann Lynch know how much trouble her Halloween costume would get her into. On October 31st, Alicia dressed up as a victim of the Boston Marathon bombing, her outfit consisting of runner's clothing and fake splattered blood. Alicia decided to post it on Instagram and Twitter, which evidently outraged numerous internet users who expressed their outrage by tweeting threats directly at her. Many angry people found a picture of Lynn's posted, on, posted of her driver's license revealing her address and other personal information and sent her bio packages. Lynn should not seem to have too much remorse over her costume stating, honestly, it's a day of the dead. I wasn't a dead person. I wasn't being disrespectful. 
I was a survivor of a marathon, and it's not like I was walking around with a fake leg or an arm torn off or something like that. Since posting the picture and receiving this problematic and troubling feedback, Alicia has deleted her social networking accounts and has also been fired from her job. This past Monday, Central Connecticut State University issued a campus-wide lockdown because of a, sus a suspicious figure on campus. The figure was dressed in all black, carrying what looked like to be a sword, and other callers worried it was a gunman. The suspicious person turned out to be 21-year-old David Kayim returning to campus from an extended ho Halloween weekend. Kayim dressed as the character Snake Eyes from G.I. Joe, scared students and faculty upon his return to school, prompting many calls to New Britain and Central Police. Kayim was warned not to return to campus until he has met with administrators. Kayim has been charged with breach of peace. And we'll be back with this week's editorial after this short break. up on sex don't give up on birth control either there are more methods than you think find yours at bedsider.org nfc afc offensive linemen defensive tackles quarterbacks and cornerbacks are all working with united way for a million little reasons the kids of our communities to ensure their academic success all the way to graduation day See, it takes about 12 years to create a graduate, but it takes the same time to create a dropout. And the difference between a kid becoming one or the other could be a professional athlete or it could be you. Studies showed the earlier we get to kids, the better their chances. So become a United Way volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor, and make a difference in the life of a child, for the life of that child. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. Join your favorite NFL players. Take the pledge. Go to unitedway.org. Get caught buzz driving, and you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. And we're back with this week's editorial. Good evening, Eastern Connecticut. I'm Ashley Wolk with this week's editorial. Browsing through the hit radio stations in Connecticut, like 93.7, 98.3, 95.7, etc., I'll typically find myself bobbing my head to the typical pop hits that crowd the airwaves. But lately, I've become especially skeptical of the variety of music that gets played on the radio, or lack thereof. I'm not originally from Connecticut, so trying to find radio stations with good music is something I look forward to. But I was quickly disappointed when I heard the same 20 songs played on the on majority of stations targeted at my age group. Is it so much to ask to have something different played besides Taylor Swift, Drake, and Miley Cyrus? Don't get me wrong. I like blasting some No New Friends or Wrecking Ball as much as the next person when I'm driving with friends or trying to get pumped up. But when looking for other types of music to listen to, it's hard to find a good alternative music station. And who's to say those stations labeled as alternative are in fact alternative? Who controls the pop stations, and are they playing the same music coincidentally, or is there a bigger picture here? The answer lies with one company one very large communication conglomerate, Clear Channel Communications. Here are some fun facts. Robert Pittman, president and CEO of Clear Channel Communications, has also been the CEO of AOL, Six Flags Theme Parks, Quantum Media, Century 21 Real Estate, Time Warner Enterprises, oh, and a small network we like to call MTV, which he also founded. Clearly this guy is something extremely valuable to bring to the table in the business world, but to be honest, I literally don't hear how he is the best radio programmer ever as Charles Warner dubbed him. This company owns around 850 radio stations. That's the majority of the stations in the US, all of which have creepy similarities in choice of music. There are different types of radio stations that Clear Channel owns, but after observation, it seems like each genre plays all the same songs. 
Diversity on the radio, in my opinion, is extremely important. It o it's only fair that everyone gets multiple legitimate options for music listening. This seems like common sense, doesn't it? Apparently not. Underground artists who, are, who are on the come up remain grounded because of their inability to cater to mainstream radio stations. Musical integrity is pushed aside for auto-tune and songs screaming, F bitches get money. Not to sound harsh or put down any specific music genre, but there comes a point when I centrally process what songs are saying nowadays and find myself asking, how is it legal for lyrics like this to be played on the radio? How is this popular music? I spend more time waiting for the beat to drop than I do actually enjoying music on the radio. The homogenization of popular music on the radio is quite literally driving me insane. And it's extremely frustrating not to hear the underground music fueled by incredible artists played on the radio. And trust me, I'm not alone. Check out the critically acclaimed documentary, Before the Music Dies, released in 2006, where artists such as Eric Clapton, Dave Matthews, and Elvis Costello bring light to the issue of mainstream radio, and how its lack of diversity is beginning to ruin the chances for future artists in their careers. Think about it. For News 22, I'm Ashley Wolk. Have a great night. And together now, we can make it better now. Come on, can we do it? Yeah, you know that we can. We roll it up. Cause we know how to jump. We roll it out. Roll it out. we know how to skate. We'll cut it down. We'll cut it down. We know what to eat. We'll swap it out. We eat healthy stuff. Can we do it? Yeah, you know that we can. Can we do it? Do it. Just moving a little and eating better every day can help make you and your child healthier. Search We Can to find doable tips and activities that you can use every day. Body language can tell you all sorts of things. Like someone is having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. Face drooping, arm weakness, speech difficulty. Time to call 911 and get them to a hospital immediately. Learn the body language and spot a stroke fast. <laughs> Eastern Connecticut State University's Performing Arts Department and Drama Society will, pre will present The Skin of Our Teeth, written by Pulitzer Prize winning playwright Thornton Wilder in the Harry Hope Theater in Schaefer Hall. A social and political satire on the indomitable American spirit, Wilder wrote the play immediately after the attack on Pearl Harbor. Winters has modernized the production to consider a, a contemporary audience. The human dilemma and human spirit are presented boldly and bravely in the struggles for survival of the wildly wonderful characters of the skin of our teeth. The play, directed by adjunct professor Jerry Winters, will run from November 19th through 23rd at 7.30 p.m. with a 4 p.m. matinee on November 24th. The public is invited. Admission is $5 for students in groups of 10 or more, $10 for Eastern faculty, staff, alumni, and senior citizens, and $12 for the general public. Anchor Brian Frankovich began a new segment this week called What's Cooking, Willie? Brian went down to Main Street and tried to interview Willimantic locals about life in general. Let's see what's cooking in Willie. Well, I'm standing here cold and alone, except for Lupe, on the streets of Willimantic in the middle of the night. Never thought I would say that, but we're going to be starting a new segment tonight called What's Cooking, Willie? All breaking bad jokes aside, we're going to be asking some Willie locals a few random questions, so let's see what they say. All right, so we have our first group tonight. So guys, how do you feel 
about Nicki Minaj? She's got a big booty. She does. She does. Yeah. I'm not really a fan, to be honest. Not a fan. That says enough. I am standing outside of the psychic visions. We are hoping to get some interviews very soon. I'm getting impatient. Well, I was expecting there would be a lot of people out wandering the streets of Willimantic, but I guess I was wrong, because we have literally seen two people that look normal enough for an interview. So, we got someone. All right, so you look like a fall person. What's your favorite thing about fall? Um, having warm clothing on. It is nice to be warm. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god, oh my god. What's happening? What is happening? <laughs> so we're back from interviewing some willy locals on the street. Pretty impressive, right? Right, how was it? Terrifying. So. How many people did you interview? Um, well, we got uh, quite a few. We got two. So I'm here with Ash, and Ash is going to tell us what her favorite TV show is. It is Duck Dynasty. All right, let's take a look at the evidence. Exhibit A. Exhibit B. Exhibit C. And Exhibit D. And Exhibit E. She cray. That's Ash. So, what started out as just a normal night in Willimantic turned into running back to our dorms terrified. But join us next week when we do this during the day. For News 22, I'm Brian Frankovich. Well, Brian, it looks like that was an interesting experience. We're all looking forward to next week, the next week's segment. That it, wa that it was, that it was. <laughs> Diana Fo, a Vietnamese American activist, also known as Aileen the Peacemaker, will present social, issue, social issues in steampunk as part of Eastern Connecticut State University's University Hour series in the Student Center Theater from 3 to 4 p.m. on November 13th. Fo will discuss race, gender, and other social issues as they relate to the evolving subculture of steampunk. Fo strives to broaden people's understanding of steampunk. Her talk will go beyond a traditional mindset to educate people on the many happenings elsewhere in the globe, for example, China, Vietnam, and India that occurred during the 19th century, and to discuss issues of racism and cul cultural appropriation as people create their costumes and characters. Students are encouraged to attend in steampunk attire. University hour is open to the public and admission is free. This past Tuesday night, veteran Brian Turner visited Eastern for a poetry reading. News 22 reporter Shelby Akers was there to check it out. Military veteran Brian Turner visited Eastern's theater to deliver stories from his latest poetry collection. At 7,000 feet and looking back, running lights blacked out under the wings and America waiting. A year of my life disappears at midnight. The sky a deep viridian, the house lights below small as match heads burned down to embers. American poet, essayist, college professor, and veteran Brian Turner delivered a powerful set of poems to Eastern students Monday night. Turner's poetry has been featured on news programs like NPR's Morning Edition, BBC's The Verb, with feature publications in The New York Times, The New Yorker, and National Geographic. Turner's poems were written during his time as team leader in the Iraqi War during the years 1999 to 2003. Turner says that he wrote the poems not for a cathartic release, but to be involved in a part of something larger. Realizing poetry as its own art form was very different from what I thought lyrics were doing at the time, and they were very, it was a very useful vehicle for me. I'm not sure if it was useful for anyone here, but it, the way I look at it is if there was one person in the audience that I might have in some way jarred something or started a small little fire or been a, a slight breeze that catches their sail, great. Reporting outside the Student Center Theater, I'm Shelby Akers for News 22. Thanks, Shelby. For more events similar to this one, check out the online events calendar for more upcoming CAB events. And we'll be back with this week's sports after the short break. Looking for these? You drive buzzed. It could be one very expensive ride. First, you got to make bail. Then pay me to get your car back. Your insurance premiums will go through the roof. 
and my legal fees just keep adding up. All told, it could end up costing you $10,000. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving because buzz driving is drunk driving. Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. Here we go. We're gonna we're gonna make some juice. It's gonna be good. She's excited. A little bit of kale. Please don't put this on. I'm putting it all over the line. It's wet. It needs something. No, it'll go. Don't break my juicer. Looks good. You ready to try it? Come on, baby. Challenge your kids to be active and eat healthy. It's okay. Okay. Like all right. They might surprise you. She took another sip. You saw it. Search. We can. For more ideas on how you and your kids can get healthy together. And we're back with this week's sports. Good evening, and I'm Brian Dasso with this week's sports update. With the calendar turning over to November, it means only one thing. It's college basketball season. Tomorrow night is the official tip-off for the 2013-2014 NCAA college basketball season. The UConn men's basketball team is one of those teams in action as they will face Maryland at the Barclays Center at 6.30 on ESPN2. While the UConn women's basketball team starts their season on Saturday at the XL Center versus Hartford. Last season, it was the Louisville Cardinals that took home the men's national championship trophy. Only time will tell who win this year's national title. As Houston Texans head coach Gary Kubiak was walking off the field during halftime in the Texans versus Colts game last Sunday, he collapsed to the ground. After being taken off the field via stretcher, Kubiak was diagnosed with a mini stroke and will also be sidelined for a few weeks. Defense coordinator Wade Phillips has been named the interim head coach. Everyone here at News 22 would like to wish a speedy and full recovery to Coach Kubiak. For the fifth straight time in seven years, Eastern's men's soccer team is heading to the LEC championships. After a 4-1 victory over the fourth seed of Rhode Island College on Wednesday, the number one ranked team will face either UMass Dartmouth or Keene State College. The game will be held on Saturday at noon at Nevers Field. Eastern pulled away early in the match, scoring three goals in 15 minutes, which demoralized Rhode Island State. The Warriors look to continue this key early production and be the first team in 15 years to win three straight championships. In a close one to nothing victory, Eastern's women's soccer team advances to the LEC semifinals. Eastern defeated close rival Western Connecticut Tuesday night with freshman forward Haley Lenning scoring the game only goal. Fifth seed Eastern will play either UMass Dartmouth or Keene State, who both had first round buys and, and played tonight. The game will be held on Saturday and the location is to be announced. After a great regular season for Eastern's field hockey team, the Warriors failed to reach the playoffs. The Warriors require two scenarios to make the playoffs. The first, Western Connecticut had to defeat Westfield State after West Western sent the game into overtime with a late goal, they fell 3-2. to two. Easter then had to beat Worcester State, who they had not beaten in five years. The Warriors held the game scoreless in the first half, but led up two goals in the second, leading to a 2 to nothing defeat. The Warriors finished the season 8-10, and 10, and despite the loss, have a great team developing for years to come. Fifth seed Eastern Connecticut's volleyball team took on Western Connecticut last Tuesday night and fell in the first round in, the third, in three straight sets. The young Eastern team allowed a Western comeback in each of those three sets on the road. Western will now go on to face UMass Boston on Saturday. Eastern's volleyball team is young and offers a promising future as they started two freshmen and two sophomores. The future bodes well for the Lady Warriors. That's all for sports. I'm Brian Dossler for News 22.
Thanks for watching. If you want to see any of our past shows, go to tv22.blib.tv. I'm Brian Frankovich. And I'm Erin Fitzsimons. Have a good night. Good night.